So with Beijing over for the men, we have the rankings updated for the men's tour, and uh, it's a bit weird this week because we do have the women's tour still going on and Beijing for the women still going on. So we sort of got like half the rankings done. Uh, but let's go have a look at who actually won last week and what the results were. So we had two 500 events last week on the men's side, starting with, in Tokyo, Arthur Feast, beating Umber in the final, saving championship points, 577663, to lift his second ATP 500 trophy. And Carlos Alcaraz, he beat Yannick Sinner in an absolute epic, 676476, to lift his fourth trophy of the year, and to make it three in a row against Yannick Sinner this year, the only guy to beat Sinner multiple times this year. So two really, really good finals on the ATP side. All right, let's have a look at the players that have gone up in the rankings this week after some big results. Umber making the final of Tokyo. He's gone up four spots, number 15 in the world. Feast, after winning in Tokyo, he's gone up three spots to 21 in the world. And Boo, the biggest mover so far in the top 100, getting to a career high 69 in the world, 27 spots higher than last week after making the semifinals in Beijing. So some players there that did really well in the 500 events, getting a lot of points. Players that went down in the rankings, Sebastian Corder. He goes down three spots, number 19 in the world. Manorino, he goes down nine spots to 53 in the world. And Ovna drops 12 spots to number 70 in the world, all because they lost points from this time last year. And there's some big drops there as well, because remember this time last year being the 500 events, if you made a semi-final of those events, we saw with Boo, you can go up really high really quick, but you can also drop if you don't defend those points. So some players there really losing some ranking points this week. All right, let's go look at the women's rankings because like I said, we didn't have any major changes because it's still going on in Beijing. So next week, we'll have an update. Fiontech, she stays at number one with Sabalenka at number two. Pagula at three, Rebecca at four, Pellini at five, Goff at number six, Zhang comes in at number seven with Navarro at eight, Collins at nine, and Krajikova rounds out the top 10 for this week. So we still have a couple of those players in action next uh, this week, Zhang, Goff, and Sabalenka. So there could be some changes to the rankings next week with those players. Over to the race of the finals, and still only Sviantec and Sabalenka have qualified for the end of year finals. But Rabakina at number three and Paolini at number four, not too far behind the line. So they could qualify over the next couple weeks. Pagula at five and Goff at six, Navarro at seven, Collins at eight, Zhang at nine, and of course, Krajikova, because of winning Wimbledon, is in that number 10 spot and has already qualified as well with Sviantek and Sabalenka. Unless she drops out of the top 20, she will qualify due to that Grand Slam rule. All right, over to the men's side of things, because this is where it gets interesting. No change at the very top with Sinner at number one, but Carlos Alcaraz overtakes Zverev, goes up to number two, pushes Zverev down to number three after winning in Beijing. And I think that is how the ranking should look, because Sinner's been the best player overall this year. And of course, Alcaraz winning two slams and a silver medal, the second best best player or at least equal best player if you want to go with that because they both have achieved the same thing at the top of the level and Zverev has been the third best player this year you know made a couple of slam semis and final also won a 1000 event so that is the top three and in the right order I think Djokovic he's still at number four for now with Medvedev at five Rublev at six Fritz at seven Hercatch at eight Root at number nine and Dimitrov rounds out the top 10 for this week. But with Shanghai coming up next week, it's worth a thousand points. And especially with Hubi Hercatch not playing in Shanghai, we will have some ranking changes next week, no matter what. Over to the race to Turin and... Again, only the three players qualified for now with Sinner, Alcaraz, and Zverev qualify for the race of the finals. Medvedev comes in at four, but he's not too far away. If he plays or wins Shanghai, he will qualify for the end of year finals. Fritz comes in at number five with Rude at six, Rublev at seven, Dimonor at eight, Djokovic at nine, and Dimitrov rounds out the top 10. So no changes to the race of the finals this week. But as I said, 1,000 points on the line, Shanghai next week. It's going to be a big tournament and a big opportunity for someone like Novak Djokovic to gain some much needed points and put himself really into that race the finals. If he wins in Shanghai, he will be well and truly in the hunt for a spot at the ATP finals. But at the moment, only three players qualified. Medvedev not too far away, but then it's pretty open after that. So there it is. No big changes to the rankings except for that Alcaraz uh, switch with Zverev. Uh, of course, Djokovic still not in contention yet for the ATP finals. But like I said, Shanghai next week, a lot's going to change. We'll talk about the women's rankings next week when Beijing's over because Beijing's worth a thousand points. Things can change with that, especially because there are some players still going on right now in the top 10 who are still active in that tournament. But let me know down in the comments below. What's the, the ATB finals going to look like? What are the WTA finals going to look like? Do you think that the current top eight on the race of finals from both the men and the women, is that what we're going to get? Or do you think we're going to get some changes? Do you think someone maybe outside the top 10 might sneak back in at the last minute because they're pretty good on indoor hard courts, for example? Somebody at the end of the year, maybe someone like a, a, a City Pass or a Runa or maybe even someone like Tommy Paul, who's been pretty good on indoor hard courts over the years. But there it is. That are the rankings for this week. Big change up the top of the men's ranking.